Hi, this is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design a basement wall completely from scratch, which is a retaining wall which is laterally restrained, usually by this by structural floor like like this one, and uh, the effect of the upper levels of the building are represented by a concentrated load on top. Usually, the backfield has a surcharge, traffic, or any other load. And um, in this example, the wall height is 10 feet from the top of footing to the top of wall, 10 feet. The backfield properties are density 120 PCF, the density, and the internal friction angle is 26 degrees. Concrete and steel uh, rebars have 4 KSI and 60 KSI FY. The allowable soil bearing pressure is 4 KSF. So let's model this example with as the breathing. Let's open as the breathing here. Let's create a calculation. Let's call it example. So the calculation is added to the tree. Double click. And this is the default calculation values for for this uh, module. We can change all these values uh, as we as we need. The stem height we said that is ten feet. Uh, the backfill is is is, uh, is is flat is zero slope. Backfill height is ten feet, same as stem height. Okay, so let's uh, model the uh, concentrated loads. Go to the loads tab, concentrated, 10 keeps dead and 5 keeps life. The eccentricity, we're going to come back with eccentricity later, and I explain why. In addition to that, let's model the solar charge of 250, which is typical for traffic, solar charge, 250, PSF. And let's go to the, uh, to the backfill now. The density 120, and the angle is 26 degrees. Let's input that. In the backfill, density 120, uh, internal friction angle 26. We don't have any uh, water table, so zero. The lateral lateral air pressure theory should be addressed because the the wall is laterally restrained at the top, cannot tilt, cannot deflect, so the shear uh, uh, resist resistance of the soil cannot be developed. So addressed is what should be used uh, as opposed to uh, the active pressure that is uh, used in, in cantilever walls. In uh, restrained walls, at rest is what should be used. No wall or, or, or seismic load. So we have the loads already input there. Materials. Uh, everything is okay. Uh, 4 and 60. 4 and 60. A level of pressure is 4. We said that. So we are done with the with the loads and materials. So let's focus on the geometry. We can see the wall graphically here, but obviously is not optimized. That that does the next next step. Usually for uh, these uh, 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 restrained walls, the stem usually is prismatic, the same thickness at the top and at the bottom. Uh, so let's let's do that. Uh, uh, instead of 12 and 20, let's say that is 10 inches thick, top and bottom, which is okay. So the, it, that's reflected there. Footing thickness 20 looks too heavy. Let's uh, try with 12, like that. And uh, toe and heel. In order to optimize that, we need to see the, uh, the calculations here, the stability check. Obviously, the overturning is not an issue because it's a restrained wall. The overturning is inf infinity. It's infinity. No problem with that. Uh, sliding, usually for this kind of walls, is not a problem either. The reason is that the 
you know, the wall is recent at the top, so we have a horizontal reaction already there. So the reaction at the bottom is, is, is not as high as, as, as in cantilever walls. In addition to that, usually these walls have a concentrated load, load on top, you know, representing the, the upper levels of the building, meaning that this vertical load increases also the friction at the, at the bottom. So usually the sliding is not a problem either, as we can see the here. The safety factor is 270 and the minimum is 150. So we are okay. We can reduce a little bit the, the toe, let's say three feet. You see, still we are okay. Let's reduce the heel, maybe maybe three feet. Obviously, we don't we don't need any any shear key because we don't have a sliding problem. Zero shear key that graphically would look like that. No shear key. The numbers was so, so we are still high. We we can reduce it a little bit. The bearing, the maximum the allowable bearing pressure is four, and the maximum bearing at toe is three point five. We have a little bit of margin there to to optimize it. We can probably here. Two. Well, we are over already here. Four point three versus four. So we went too far. Maybe maybe two point five. Yeah, two point five is three point six versus four in the bearing capacity, and the sliding safety factor is two versus one fifty. It's okay. So probably this is the the numbers that we should keep. Three and two point five at toe and heel. Uh, the soil cover, maybe just one foot soil cover, just like that. Yeah, as you can see, you know, these numbers are very well optimized. We, we, we could optimize a little bit more if we reduce here, instead of three, maybe 2.5 or 2.8 or something like that. We can optimize a, a, as much as we can. Another uh, thing that I would like to comment here is that, the uh, you know, the fixity at the, at the bottom could be pin or fix. This is important because you know the if we see the uh, the stem is if if the stem is fixed at the base, obviously we will have a moment there, right? If it's fixed, you know the, the you know the whole moment will be positive, just one side moment rather than negative and positive moment. Obviously, this will uh, affect the rebars at the stem, but also will affect the footing and, uh, and all the, the stability. For example, let's look at the stability here. If it's fixed, the stability looks like that, 3.1 and 3.6. This is the bearing capacity, the bearing uh, pressures. If it's fixed, if it's a pin, look to what happened. You know, since all this weight of the uh, backfill is on top of the hill, the bearing pressure here is larger, 4.7, and we went over the maximum, the, the allowable capacity, which is four. So probably we should use fix and keep in 3.6 and 3.1. That's that's uh, the best option in, in, in my opinion. Okay. So the numbers here looks looks fine. 3.6 versus four and 1.85 versus 1.50. This is very well optimized. Regarding the thicknesses, the thicknesses are controlled by shear. And the stem, I selected 10 inches because we want to have a double layer of rebars. So 10 inches is probably what we should keep. And uh, the ratio is 0.66 in shear. It's okay. We can uh, optimize a little, bit, a little bit more if we want, but uh, 10 inches is fine. Uh, the toe is 0.94. So the thickness of the footing, which is 12, 0.94 is close to the maximum, but it's, it's, it's fine, it's acceptable. And the heel, 51. So it, I think it's a, it's a good uh, combination of uh, dimensions there. Let's focus now on the reinforcement. Let's go to the reinforcement tab. Uh, we can see here at the stem that the uh, moment capacity is still you know, the ratio is too low, we can optimize a little bit more of that. Instead of using number six at uh, 10, let's use number six at uh, 12, probably. It's a little bit more. Uh, 
to optimize that, we need to see the stem capacities there. We can reduce it a little bit more in number sixes. Yeah, it's much more optimized there. Here, we can optimize it a little bit, you know, the, the other uh, moment there. Instead of number six at 10, remember six at 12, you know, it's still, it's still too much, maybe at 18. Yeah. Okay. So this is a very good uh, combination of rebars. That means number six at 12 for the negative moment, number six at 18 for the positive moment. In the construction tab, we, we can see exactly that. Number six for the negative moment, six at, at 12, and number six at 18 for the positive moment. Okay, so the stem is okay like that, we keep it. The toe, we can see at a glance, we can see the ratios. The toe is already in the maximum capacity. We, we, we shouldn't optimize it a little uh, anymore. 0.94 is uh, probably the maximum that we should uh, get. 0.94. So number six at 10 is okay. We'll, we'll keep it. The heel, obviously we can optimize a little bit more. Instead of six at 12, maybe six at 18, probably. And we can get 0.56, which is okay. But the minimum steel area is fine everywhere and the development length is okay. So this is the uh, the rebar that we probably should keep. Graphically looks like that, which is okay, looks great, looks great. Maybe the uh, cutoff length, let me go to the stem. You know, th this portion here is probably too high, meaning that the rebar is too long. We don't need that much bar. So instead of seven for the cutoff length, the cutoff length is this uh, this length where the backfield rebar can be cut off. This is the cutoff length. Instead of seven, which looks like this, let's see, six is better. Um, we can or, or even even more, maybe maybe five, like that. Okay, so we are optimizing the rebars very well, like this. Yeah, okay, graphically or uh, uh, at a glance looks like this. You, you can see that all the numbers are very well optimized and very close to the maximums. The ratios, very good. Here the ratio is 0.8, the stem is perfect. The toe, excellent. The heel can be optimized a little bit more, but we leave it the way it is. If we go to the Condense tab, we can see the results in more detail. We can see the overtaining calculations. And here we can see the stem design with all the moments at the, fen at the tenths of the height and the ratio at every, at every tenth. Uh, we saw that the sliding is already optimized, is reflected here. The heel design is there and the toe design. If we go to the detailed uh, tab, we can see the results, but uh, with all the exposed formulas and reference to the code, you can check step by step all the calculations. Every single calculation uh, done internally is reflected here. Solving pressures. Sliding calculations, the stem design with references to the code, you can see there, the heel design, same thing, all the formulas, uh, all the checks uh, by uh, ACI, and so on. Uh, graphically, you can see the stability here, the bearing, all the forces that are resulting from the stability analysis. Uh, the passive pressure, friction, the reaction at the bottom, the applied force, the resultant force horizontally, the resultant force vertically, and here uh, the support reaction at the top. 
safety factors, which are very well, as you can see, very well optimized. In the stem tab, you can see the, uh, the pressures of the solar charge and the backfill. We don't have a, a seismic, we don't have wind. The stem moment diagram versus the moment capacity and the shear diagram versus the shear capacity. The construction tab shows the rebars resulting of your analysis. And of course, you can print out the condensed report or the detailed report. You can see that very quickly. It's a pre-formatted report that you can print out and uh, give to your client, give to, to your uh, uh, team members. Let's see the detailed report. Again, it's pre-formatted. You can see all the formulas that you can print out for yourself or for somebody else. Very convenient to keep all your uh, calculations handy. With this, we conclude this uh, tutorial. Thank you for your attention and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.